Our Colts uh, don't return for home cooking for a couple weeks here, not until the 10th of November when the Bills come a call and will they have a shot to play in front of the home fans who are definitely disappointed this morning after giving up a golden opportunity to seize first place in the AFC South. Instead, the Texans won it 23-20 to charge two games clear of the Colts. Our Colts contributor Heather Lloyd is here, dressed all in black this morning. Oh, morning. Perfect. I like that. You, you little worn out and weary? Uh, you know, imagine a three-hour roller coaster ride. That's what lot watching this game was like yesterday. I'm still feeling a little woozy from it. <laughs> but it started out with excitement. We were feeling good about the Colts getting back Jonathan Taylor and DeForest Buckner, arguably their best players on both sides of the ball. The Texans were missing a few of their stars and quite honestly did not play their best game. They left the door open for the Colts again and again, but instead of capitalizing on it, the Colts made mistake after mistake until the final painful seconds ran off the clock. Credit to the Colts defense. They kept the pressure on CJ Stroud. They kept the game within reach, but in the most important game of the year against the division leader, inconsistent play did the Colts in. In fact, I could argue that the only thing consistent about this team is their inconsistency. Mm -hmm. Some of it's inexperience on the part of Anthony Richardson, questionable decisions, poor clock management, bad execution. I can't even talk about the Colts, how the Colts handled the end of the game. Mm -hmm. But let's just say it was a fitting end to a really sloppy performance on the part of many. And these are the games you look back on at the end of the season and think, if we could have just captured that one. Mm -hmm. But alas, they did not. Now the Colts are back to four and four. They were two and two. They were three and three. <laughs> now they're four and four. I mean, th this th you are what your record says you are, right? This is the definition of a mediocre football team. Well, you know, speaking of mediocre, yeah. I don't want to say it, but Anthony Richardson, he did not have a good day yesterday, Heather. And honestly, I'm going to give him a tiny bit of credit because he did not have a lot of help from his receivers yesterday. We can all agree on that, right? Um, in the first quarter and specifically in the first possession, I thought Richardson was mostly on target and that the poor stats really didn't reflect his performance. But then in the second and third quarter, he lived up to those bad stats. And instead of deflecting them, he began to reflect them. It only got worse from there. There was a fumbled snap. Then there was a bizarre moment where after a few longer runs, Richardson tapped on his helmet and pulled himself out of the game. Flacco came in, converted the third down, got Matt Gay in field goal position. Richardson wasn't hurt, but he needed a breather. So the 22-year-old comes out, the 40-year-old comes in cold off the bench in a key moment. It was an interesting scenario that I have never seen in football, and neither had Pat McAfee, who tweeted this out right afterwards. I had never seen an NFL quarterback tap out while still being healthy until watching Anthony Richardson. The QB is your franchise. The message it sends is loud and influential. Asked about it afterwards, Richardson said he was tired. That was a lot of running. Thoughts? Don't hold back, Marcus. You're the oh, one yeah. with thoughts. No, I can go. I can go one or two. Because I think it's an unfair comparison. I know a lot of Colts fans are going to say, be like, Peyton Manning would never do that. Well, Peyton Manning's not going to be running, you know, 40 yard dash three sure. plays in a row. All right, that's not fair. You could make the comparison that Lamar Jackson would not be doing that. And so that would be a fair comparison. I don't know. I, I, I understand what yeah. Pat McAfee is saying here, yeah. but I, you and I said, and, and our director said this to me, and I didn't really think about it either. If Jonathan Taylor has three big runs, mm -hmm. he's doing the exact same thing. Yep. All right? Yep. So it, it is different. I don't know. You have to kind of think of it that way. It I've, does send a, a I've weird never signal. seen a quarterback who doesn't want the ball in his hands, though, sure. at a key moment. You know, so, Marcus, I'm, I'm a little winded here. <laughs> you want to take this next paragraph? <laughs> we can't afford that. You have to yeah, stay in the right, game. You have to stay in the game. That's I do right. wonder this, uh, and far be it for me to even guess whether that's the right call or sure. not to leave the game. But is this a pivot moment for fan support? Because for quarterbacks in Indianapolis, yeah. mm -hmm. if you lose the fans, it becomes an extremely mm -hmm. difficult road to hope. It was rough on Twitter yesterday. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. it, was pre it was pretty rough. The other thing you have to think about, too, is if you're going to open that door up, there's probably a lot of moments in that game that Joe Flacco could probably have got the job done better, right? So if you're going to open that door, just be careful because you can't slam it back shut again then. Okay. So we try to wash clean this we, we need a division win. Here's the thing. It doesn't get easier. No. Nope. Uh, we go to your hometown and now have to play on national TV. And should I mention, too, that the last time, do you remember the last time we were in Minnesota? 
what happened? Um, yes, because it was my 50th birthday. <laughs> and, it, and it was a historic loss. Historic loss. The, an absolute beating. Um, so remember we talked about the Colts having some winnable games before they have to go and run the gauntlet? Well, welcome to the gauntlet. The Vikings won five games in a row before losing to the Lions and Rams. Now they're going to be at home in prime time to face the Colts, who will have their work cut out for them. After that, the Colts host the Bills and the mm. Jets before heading to Detroit to play the Lions, who are like, what, six and one? The reality is, you play badly, you make mistakes, you beat yourself. This team is not good enough to beat themselves and their opponent, whoever that opponent is. All right, <laughs> let's just circle, though, that we're in a time where Vikings, Bills, Jets, and Lions are considered the uh, gauntlet. No, <laughs> isn't that wild? Yeah. Hey, the NFC North is is maybe really good. The, the, the best you know division in the really NFL right good. now. They are wow. unbelievable, and the Colts get to play all of them this uh, this season. Yay. So yay for us. <laughs> Heather, thank you. Yeah. Don't tap out ever Always again. Always fine. I'll, I'll <laughs> be tired, here. Tara. I'm out. Yeah, for Marcus is tapping out for Tara now. Break time. Well, I'm not tapping out. I'm still ready to go. Well, that's good. <laughs>